to God. We need the fire. We need the fire. <clears throat> we need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God to set us on blaze. Hallelujah. Set us ablaze. Glory to God. Amen. That our passion, amen. And we know when it talks about uh, when, when about candles, that candles have to have the wick trimmed, amen, so that it begins to burn brighter. Glory to God. We decree that the fire, the holy fire of God, amen, come to his temple again, that our wicks are trimmed. Glory to God so that the fire of God burns in us brighter than ever before in this day of darkness. Glory to God. Well, welcome, everybody. We greet you in Jesus' joy. Amen. Grateful for this Lord's day. And I'm uh, grateful for everyone that's on the call tonight. Amen. And uh, we also want to take a moment to greet Minister Ali Santiago uh, and the saints there in El Salvador, Guatemala. Amen. And uh, Honduras, Honduras. Amen. And as we come to understand St. Vincent. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. And uh, as they will be viewing this later and all that that will uh, view this later by replay, we greet you in a strong, uh, supernatural, sovereign name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Glory to God. I'm not going to uh, continue on because I do feel the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The presence of God. We're in such amazing times. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're in the kind of times, amen, that in these days coming, we are going to appreciate why God did what he did in our lives and why he allowed us to go through what we went through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible talks about a woman, amen, that when she gives birth, glory to God, that the nine months uh, of preparation, the nine months of pain, uh, the nine months uh, uh, of that she had to endure the baby. Glory to God. Once the baby is born, once he the baby is brought forth, amen, the joy of the baby, glory to God, cancels out all the pain. 
Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared, hallelujah, with the, the glory of God, the move of God, amen, that is going to be brought forth out of the people of God in this hour, hallelujah. Let's pray and we're going to get started. Father, we thank you tonight and we give you praise. We glorify your great name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your sovereign will and your kindness, Lord God, that you have blessed us, Lord, even as you have uh, caused us to cross over in into a brand new year. We thank you for this year of greatness. We thank you for the year of power. We thank you that this is a year, according to Isaiah 45, that you are taking hold of the hand of the body of Christ to cause us to subdue nations, Lord, that you're causing us to reach, Lord, in the midst of the darkness uh, in the world and even the gross darkness to people and begin, Lord, to, to lay hold on uh, treasures in the darkness, Lord, for your glory, that this is a time of unprecedented harvest. We thank you that as we gather around this medium of technology, Holy Spirit, we pray now that you would begin to uh, uh, touch us in a whole fresh, brand new way. We pray for our instructor tonight for the fire of God to be upon her, uh, uh, upon her and even in her mouth as she declared the word of the Lord. Uh, we thank you for giving us fresh ears to hear. Thank you for giving us fresh eyes to see. Thank you for giving giving us a mouth and ears uh, to hear and see and to speak clearly and uh, hearts afresh to receive the engrafted word of faith that will be declared tonight that in all things are said and done, you will get the greatest glory in Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just take a moment and just celebrate the Lord our God and give God great praise tonight for his faithfulness? The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy. Amen. He is due. It is due unto him the glory and the honor and the praise. And so tonight uh, we're going to continue. This is um, my class number two and um, our instructors, Dr. Karen McCray, amen. And she's been setting the the um, the foundation, laying the foundation, amen. Great, great class on last week talking about possessing gates, amen. And uh, we were so tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord. And uh, we are excited and, and sit with expectation, um, amen, not to be idle, Amen. But we engage in the word of the Lord as uh, um, Proverbs 4.22 says, attend your ear to the word, lean into it, give ear. Hallelujah. Glory to God, which means it is a work that we have to personally do. We have to give our ear and attend to lean into the word of the Lord. So at this time, without any further ado, I'm going to turn the class over to our instructor tonight, Dr. Karen McCray. Can we give God praise as um, uh, she takes over? Thank you, thank you, Apostle. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to Kingdom Academy, Gates 101, Part 2. Gates 101, Part 2. Last week, our discussion centered around various types of natural gates. And as we discussed last week, those uh, natural gates uh, looking at those in the Old Testament, and we saw a few in the New, but mainly in the Old Testament. One of the things that we saw was that a city or nation, vulnerability or strength, often depended on the strength of its gate. If you overran the gate, you took the city. You, that nation was subdued. And so when we, as we recall the natural things, uh, that we discussed last week. I told you this week we would discuss the spiritual aspects of gates. And so we saw last week that the gates of a city were very significant. And the people in biblical times really, really, truly understood the significance of gates. Last week, we talked about uh, gates were the seats of authority, where business and legal matters was transacted, what, at the city gate. Uh, wisdom was uttered at the gates. Uh, judges and officers, people served at the gates. They administered justice at the gate. Uh, councils, the elders, and all of them, they would meet at the gate. Uh, the word was read at the gate. Prophets proclaim the message of God from the gates. So it was at the gate, a lot of things occurred. 
And we know that people also had to enter into the gates in order to get into a city. But we also was ending up show, talking about the gate beautiful and the temple gates and people had to enter through the gates in order to worship God, whether in a tabernacle, tabernacle or even the temple. We also talked about the fact that God came into the temple, what, from, from the east gate. Uh, so these were some things we talked about last week. We talked about the gates being shut at nightfall because they were a chief point of entry and the enemy could attack and come in. But we saw in Revelations that there are 12 gates to the city made of pearl and the gates of that city neither closes, they're open all the time. That's that eternal gate, that city of Jerusalem where uh, none can enter in and be in but the righteous. Uh, we didn't get to this, but idolatrous acts are performed at the gate. That was in Acts 14, 13. Um, and we did not discuss the fact that battering rams could be set against the gates. Okay. And uh, so these natural gates had their significance. Everyone, both whether they were in Israel or not, understood the significance of gates and their meaning. And um, they weren't like the little gates that we have our community in and out. You know, you open your gate, you drive through, you may have a guard that wave you through. We don't transact business at the gate or none of that happens at the gate. We also saw uh, last week where, uh, and we talked about Jesus being crucified outside the gate. That was, that's, that was business. Uh, we, we talked about the fact that a widow was coming out of the gate with her son who uh, was dead and Jesus uh, touched it and the young man became alive again. So there was a miracle at the gate. So a lot of things took place at the gate. We also talked about the lame man who, who sat outside the gate, beautiful, which was the East gate, the main gate into the temple. And there he received his healing. For those of us who were in service on Sunday, Apostle's message on possessing the gate was about what? A miracle at the gate and in the gate or in the gate and a miracle at the gate. So we talked about those natural gates last week. And tonight, as we come together, we're going to talk about a few other gates. Now, listen, all these gates are not conclusive, but I'm hitting the main gates as we prepare our minds and our hearts to possess the gates in 2024, okay? So I want to start, and it's difficult with these because they overlap one another, but we, we're gonna work it, okay? So let's talk about the gates of righteousness, okay? We are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. That's what we say. We say we have been made righteous. The Bible says that uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as what? Righteousness. So when we start talking about a gate of righteousness, we, we're looking again at um, something intangible, but yet and still the Bible talks about gates of righteousness. So I need you to get some scriptures and here's where we're going. The nation of Israel was considered righteous. We are considered righteous because we believe in Christ Jesus. So turn to someone get Isaiah 60, 21. Isaiah 61, I want to 
wasn't going to go there, but I believe it is. I believe it's Isaiah 61. I think it's verse 6. Isaiah 61. Is it verse 61? No, I'm sorry. Isaiah 61, verse 3. Isaiah 61, 3. I have that. Okay, hold on. I'm going to give you some more because I want people to get it because I'm going to call you. Psalm 118, verse 19 and 20. Isaiah 60, 21. Isaiah 61 and 3, Psalm 118, 19 and 20. So whoever has Isaiah 60 and 21, read that for me. Isaiah 60 and 21. Mm -hmm. And your people also, your people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of of my hands that I may be glorified. And that is the new King James Version. That's fine, that's fine. So y'all, you, you, you grab hold to this now, <laughs> okay? It says there what? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It said in verse 20, uh, so yeah, in 60 and 21, you were correct, okay? Also, your and, people shall be what? Righteous. Righteous. And That's they shall said. inherit okay. the land forever. And they shall inherit the land forever. Okay. The branch of my planting. The works of my hands. And the works of my hands. Correct. That I now remember, this is Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We know that Jesus is the word. And later on, when we go to the New Testament, Jesus said what? I am the vine, you are what? The, the branch. Branches. You can't bear nothing without me, okay? Without me. So we are what? In Christ, we are righteous. He has made us righteous, okay? Now look, someone read 61. Isaiah 61 and three. What does that one say? To console those who mourn in Zion, to, con to give them the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the okay. planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Okay, so he's, again, he's talking about people becoming what? Trees of righteousness. We're talking about us being righteous. We're going to get to this gate part. Now turn to Psalm 118 and someone read me 19 and 20. I have it. Oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, Evangelist Lanita, would you read it for me? Yes. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. So there is a gate of righteousness, okay? But when you go to Revelations, when we talked last week about Revelations, there were 12 gates to the city. They were made of pearl. They didn't say none of those gates was righteous. <laughs> okay. So we've got to understand we've been made righteous through who? Christ Jesus. Jesus is righteous. So Jesus is the gate of righteous. And this leads to Jesus saying, I am the door. I am the way. Okay. You can't get to God without going through righteousness which is Christ Jesus. <laughs> are are y'all kind of getting it? Okay. So the, we are going to go through the gate of righteousness to give God praise. All right. Wow. And to worship him. Are you, are you seeing this here now about the gates of righteousness? I'm going to tie in another one. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Someone read that one. Does anyone have 2 Corinthians 
I have it. it. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Who has it? Go. Oh, okay. For he, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay. Are y'all seeing that? So we are the righteousness of God, what? In Christ Jesus. And Jesus is the gate of righteousness. <laughs> wow. Now, also last week, when we were talking about gates, I said that gates were entryways and they were also what? Doors. Right? We're going to go now. In a minute, I'm going to let you start commenting, but I want to tie these two together. So we talked about gates of righteousness. Now look at Jesus. We're going to look at Jesus being the gate, the door. Will someone get John 14, 6? Thank you, Lord. And then we're going to turn to John. Okay, this one's John 10. There's going to be several verses in John 10. So will someone read me John 14 and 6? John 14, 6 read, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Okay, so you can't get to the Father. What? Unless you go through Jesus. That means there's an entryway to the Father. You can't get to the Father without going through the entrance. Now we're going to turn to John 10. And look at verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Go down to verse nine. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And Jesus said, I am what? the door. I am the gate. <laughs> okay. So when you begin to look at Jesus being the door, the gateway, and we look at gates of righteousness, we have become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the gate. And now Jesus, because we have come to him, has also made us a gate. And we'll get into that later. But I want you to, you know, there are a lot of other scriptures that we will, we can see about Jesus being the gate, being the doorway, okay? But remember I said that it was significant because everyone understood what happened at the gate, okay? Business takes place at the gate. Jesus is our high priest. When we want to talk to the Father, we got to go to what? The gate <laughs> in prayer. You see what I'm saying? When we go to Jesus, we're at the gate. We're at the entryway into the, the heavens. We're at the entryway into everything. When we start doing business with Jesus and transacting business with Jesus, we're actually transacting business at the door, at the gate. All right? And Jesus said, you're not coming in here. You're not coming to Abba Father. You're not getting Abba Father unless you come through me. And what did I say? Gate, a gate can be vulnerable or a gate can be strength, all right? And Jesus, I, 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 I know how to defend my gate, all right? Now, in Revelations 11 and 15, 
it talks about the kingdoms of this world, what? Becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and our Savior, our God, right? And we talked about overtaking those nations gates and they understood if you took their gate, you took their land, you took their property, you took their kingdom. So Jesus is saying in Revelation that Jesus is the gate and he going to take the gates of all the other kingdoms, okay? <laughs> They're going to lose their gates. They can't win. Whatever they come against Jesus, they cannot win. So Jesus is the gate. He is the way. He is the truth. And he's the gatekeeper. Uh-oh. Wow. <laughs> And Jesus also knows how to protect his gate. And he also knows how to possess his gate, all right? And he's not going to let nothing come in and take anything outside of his gate. Anything that's released through the gates is because Jesus allows it to be released. Uh-oh. He said, I will open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You can't even open up the window of heaven. You can't reach up there. Jesus opens up the window and pour you out a blessing when you do what he says do. Uh-oh. So now, any comments on what we've just talked about? The gates of righteousness and Jesus being the gate. Anyone got any comments on that? Any questions? Any comments? The door, the door is open. <laughs> the gate is open for comments. The gate is open for discussion. We are at the gate and we're discussing business, kingdom business at the gate right now. And we're discussing righteousness and Jesus being the way. Comments, questions, thoughts, scriptures come to mind. Dr. Hartley. Prophet. I was just thinking there's a doctrine that's taught that you can get to God through many ways and that we all end up at the same place. Jesus says there's one way, the only way, and he is that only and one way. <laughs> and there's the difference in our doctrine. But some people want to include all this other stuff. And that is not what he says. He said, if you come another way, you are a thief. And you can't get in. Amen. That's one made that point. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> um, I have I have a uh I want I have a question. Yes. Hello everybody. My name is Colin. Just all right. Um I want to just be able to get the scriptures because I have uh missed out on the scriptures. Uh, some of them. I have Isaiah chapter 60, verse 21 to 22. I got Isaiah 61, but I didn't catch the verse. Well, okay, Isaiah, you know what verse six, okay. Be? Isaiah 61 and 3. Okay. All right. I have Psalms 119. No, what, Psalm 118. 118? Okay. Yes. Verse 19 right. and 20. And what verse? Verses 19 and 20. Okay. I know it was another Psalms, but I didn't hear the, the chapter. Um, that's the only mm -hmm. one I got for Isaiah. I mean, for Psalms. It is 118, chapter 19 and 20. Mention another Psalms. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. All right. And I have John, chapter 10. Verse seven. That's one of them too. Right? Seven, verses seven, verses nine, and verses ten is what I read. Okay. All right. Okay. And do you have John fourteen six? Now I do. <laughs> okay. And Revelation eleven fifteen. Okay. Okay. These scriptures deal with the gates of righteousness and Jesus as the door. Um, prophet, it was one more Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Yes. Second Corinthians. Yes. yes. Okay. 
You said, are you, um, are, check are you okay, what? Mr. Cott? Are you okay? You need something else? What else? Um, no, just the uh, he said Second Corinthians and what's the um chapter in the verse? Five. Five. Twenty-one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, I'm I'm on track now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Elder Cheney, I know I can go kind of fast, so okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Cheney, you have you have something to say? I see your hand up. Mm -hmm. Yes, I um, and I don't know if this has already been said, so if it has, I apologize. But I was thinking about the purpose of gates in our discussion, and I think that um, our it's important that um, um, we talk about you know access, like j gates being a means of access to to God and Jesus being the gate and then mm -hmm. I was just looking up the definition of gates but it, it's like dual purpose it's an access point but it's also to keep things out that you don't want to come that that don't belong in and so I think to um evangelists um or to uh, Dr. Hart and Mother Hartley's um point is that all the different ways that um philosophers and uh, theologians and whoever else, academics will say we have access to God um, is that there really is only one way and that the gate is is not me. It does not, um, th there is access, but there's also, um, um, there are also things that are not allowed past the gate is, is what I mean to say. Correct. That's why I say, yes, Jesus is the way and he knows how to protect the gate. Nothing is going to enter that should not enter. And whatever goes out is because he lets it out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Good points. When we talk about um, Jesus being the gate, letting things in and out and protecting us, when he was crucified, his blood also became a gate that we use, a, a, a type of gate that we use when we begin to plead the blood of Jesus and cover some things. And we put the blood of Jesus on our doorpost to keep out, uh, to keep death away or to keep things out. We uh, And we plead the blood of Jesus to cover and protect our families and different things. Um, I thought about his blood after he was crucified as well as another act, his blood being another access point. Is, That's part is of that... what's going to come late with, uh, with possessing the gate. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's mm -hmm. part of possessing the gate because now you're, when, remember I said a business transaction or a spiritual transaction takes place when we pray, when we declare stuff, we're establishing things with the words that we speak. We do it what? At the gate. We do it before the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray in his name. That's part of possessing the gate. Anyone else? Oh, y'all thinking, I'm glad. Come on, stir it up. Okay. <laughs> but now, for profit. Yeah, because there because there are so many different gates. Mm -hmm. You you need to understand, I guess, or find the right gate mm -hmm. in order. Because if you're doing business at the wrong gate, or trying to possess a gate that you're not the gatekeeper of. Mm -hmm. Then that explains why um, there's failure in, in possessing what we should possess through our prayer time, through our declaring time, through our um, decree, our times of decree. Because knowing, although this might seem like 101, but it, it's not really 101. It's a, it's a it's a start for us to understand how important these these gates are yes it is and, and you all remember when we went through the phase of people would would pray in his name i don't know about you all but i would say whose name you know how people pray and uh they say you can't use the name of jesus well 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 what, what name am i using 
because he's he's the way to the father and he says whatever you pray in my name okay it shall be given unto you so that 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 is that's another part of knowing and understanding the importance and where Jesus rests in our faith. He is the central point of our faith. <laughs> you have another hand, Prophet. Who, 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 who um, Minister name? Val. Okay, Minister Val. So if, if, if Jesus is the foundation, right? I, I didn't hear you. You kind of faded out because of your, say it again. I said, Jesus is the foundation. He said, if you come any other way, mm -hmm. then his name made you a thief and a robbery, right? A robber, Cor right? Correct. Mm-hmm. So, so understand something now, because uh, later on during the year, or I don't know when Apostle is going to bring it up, so you got to understand that um, you got to see the importance and the significance of this gate and why the thief, why the enemy, why the adversary who's ramming against this gate, which is ramming against us, does want us to take the way lightly. Uh oh. Why, when people say, oh, it don't take all of that, you don't have to do all of that. You need to understand that's the subtleness of the enemy for us to drop Jesus or stop using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the way. He is the way. And now that we are believers, we are part of the kingdom of the living God. We are now gates of righteousness. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start getting into us a little bit later, but, but we've got to understand that what he said, what there's a thief. He comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. He wants to destroy our gates. He wants to destroy us, okay? And what Prophet Natalie would talk about, was discussing is another gate. It leads to another gate. Jesus talked about the gate of hell. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Will someone turn to Matthew 16 and 18? Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 41, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 comes after Peter has made a declaration. I have Matthew 16 and 18. Uh, would you read that? And I say, and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Did you know that? Notice that it did not say gate. It said gates with an S. The gates of Hades. In some it says the gates of hell. Well, in Jewish, in, 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 uh, the Jewish faith or in Jewish times or uh, hell is translated as hate. It talks about the realm of the dead. Okay. We're talking about the realm of the dead. It is also the place of final judgment. Okay. So there are two trains of thoughts here, but with philosophers and theologians, all right? But I'm going to just stick with what the Holy Spirit was giving me for us, all right? When we begin to understand, even if hate means the realm of the dead, okay? Nothing dead can prevail against the word. Hmm. 
when the earth was formed, it was dark, it was void. Nothing existed. When the word spoke, things become alive, okay? When the word shows up, anything that dead becomes alive. Therefore, when the word shows up, nothing dead can prevail against the word, which is life. It is light. Okay. So even at that, he, uh, uh, Jesus said death going to be the final thing, but even death cannot prevail against Jesus. What did I just tell y'all? Uh, uh, the young boy was dead at the gate. What? He rose up. We know he called for Lazarus. Death couldn't stay dead because of Jesus. Now, if we look at it also as the final judgment place, if we also look at it where Satan and his angels and his demons are, that means Satan and his demons cannot win uh -oh, against the Lord. Matter of fact, he said, I kicked him out of heaven and I saw him fall into the earth. I saw him fall in his lightning. God has already said, I prepared a place for Satan and his angels. It's called hell. Uh oh. So the gates, whatever them spirits are that's in the gates of hell cannot prevail against Christ. The rock that Peter was saying, he said, thou art the Christ. Uh-oh. <laughs> that revelation of who Jesus is. Once you get the revelation of who Jesus is, guess what? The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Uh-oh. So we are the church. We are the ecclesia. The only way the gates of hell is going to provide, pro, pro, uh, uh, um, come against us is when is we give it to them. Uh oh, that we don't possess our gates. Uh oh, wow. So, I think I just that was sixteen and eighteen. Did somebody have twenty five forty one? I have it. Read that because I I just went over it. But here's the scripture <laughs> that says it. Dick and Pam, what does it say? Then he will also say to those on the left hand. Depart from me, you, cur you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And we know that that everlasting fire in Revelations and in other parts of the scripture tells us that where? That's the final place of judgment. That's hell or hate. Okay. Can I tell you something? We were all dead in sin. <laughs> were we not? When you're dead in sin, it's like we're walking dead men. Because we're dead to God. We're dead. But when we heard the voice and received Jesus, ah, we were translated. We left death and became alive. Uh-oh. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but the life I live in the what flesh is through Christ Jesus. When I came to Jesus, I became alive. My spirit was regenerated. It was dead. Now it's been regenerated. So guess what? I'm no longer in the even in the realm of death because I'm no longer in sin. I'm not walking in sin. The just shall live by faith. I was made what righteous. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Oh, wow. So are you seeing where this gates of hell, dead things are a part of Hades? We were not in hell, but we were as hell when we were dead in our trespasses. Wow. We were dead. We were dead. But Jesus made us what? Alive. Because anything that comes into acceptance of Jesus, the knowledge and the wisdom of him, guess what? He makes you alive. And now we have entered into another kingdom. 
The only reason we are in the kingdom of the living God is because we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And so Jesus, the gatekeeper, opened it up and said, come in. You are now in the kingdom of the living God. You're no longer in the kingdom of the world. All right. Comments? Come on. Anyone want to talk about the gates of hell? Anybody? Comments? Questions? All right, let's go on. I, I, I know I'm giving you a lot, right? <laughs> Apostle, did you want to say something before I, I get to this narrow gate? I have, I have a question, um, Prophet um, mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah. I, think I would like to ask you, okay, um, when, uh, when, when we pass from our body, and we die, we die. That is considered the first death. But when you go to hell, isn't that sub, uh, is that considered the second death? Eter eternal, is it called eternal, uh, the eternal death? When you go to hell? Yes, that is the final judgment. If you, if you go to hell, yes. You're in the lake no, of fire. It, you go to hell. It, Jesus, Jesus it, said, the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So with Jesus is eternal life. But he said the wages of sin, if you stay in sin, live in sin, you're going to get death. Death is where you don't, death does not enter into eternity with Christ Jesus. Does that make sense? So, so, so you I, enter into the judgment, which is hell. Yes, I understand that part, but I want to know. I'm asking: Is it called? Uh, is it called a such thing? Or called a second death? Yes, it is. Apostle, okay. you want to address that? That's in Revelations, isn't it? Yes, there is. Yes. It's um, reserved for yes, it's reserved for Satan and all his angels. If I correct in that second death apostle. Yes, and those that that um that reject Christ. And those okay. Okay. Yeah. If I'm correct, there's some that say in other words, they die twice. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, hold on. No. I got a, I got a, um, so just to, you know, yeah, to elaborate on what she's saying. So the way that I'm looking at it from what she had expressed, um, technically we die from, we die from our flesh before we, our soul is actually being judged, right? Is that, does that make any sense? No, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Okay, so, you know, I, as us living on this earth right now, right, we're living in the flesh, right? But we also, you know, we have a soul and we feed that soul either, you know, by following Jesus Christ or we're going to, you know, continue to go through sin, right? So mm -hmm. when we die in our flesh, but our soul is not our flesh. You know what I'm saying? Our spirit, our spirit. To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And our spirit leaves. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. To be absent from the body, the scripture says to be present with the Lord. That's for people who are in Christ. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, um, Prophet, just to add on to that, um, that's kind of like a <clears throat> um, like an eschatological, uh, eschatological yes. concept, mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. what it's actually referring to and um, is what, what's already been said. In sin, we're already dead, even though the body still exists. Um, but after after. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 
when when everything is cast into uh, the Bible says the lake of fire, death, hell, and the grave, <clears throat> and those that because uh, the body's gonna go through a change. So for those who have not accepted Christ, um, that would be considered a second death because what happens is they they uh, the body dies as all as all does and it goes back to the ground. But like you said, the soul's gonna um, uh, live forever, but it's that is considered a um, a second death. But for those who are in Christ, when we die to ourselves, <clears throat> um, there is really no second death because what happens is our body becomes glorified the same way Jesus, and Jesus is, is our prototype. Um, when he was resurrected from the grave, from the dead, um, he still had his body. It was a different body. Mm -hmm. But but you you will notice that those who don't accept Christ, those who are um, uh, who go to hell, that's a second death because they don't really get like a body. Um, there's their soul, which is eternal because the soul can't die. Um, so it is actually speaking about a, a body, a physical body. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is eternal, soul can't die. The soul is going to still exist. It just depends on where where it is. So it's just you know from a um, from a theological point, um, it it is just to make a reference um, of them going through um, the, another loss. Because you would you would you when you when you study scripture you will find out that only those who are saved in Christ get a change in body. And to prove the point, Jesus, um, who is our prototype, when he, again, when he was resurrected, he had a glorified body, the kind of body, <clears throat> excuse me, that was able to walk through walls. It was not subject to this natural world. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible also says in Hebrews that Jesus right now is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. The Bible calls him the man, Christ Jesus. So he is the representation of, of mankind who has the kind of body, um, the glorified body, the only type that can exist in the presence of God in that state. Because this this type body, um, because of the sin, um, and I, I pray um, you follow me, because of the sin nature, um, the body had to be done. To give you a perfect example, um, the whole, um, um, uh, when Noah, um, when God called Noah to come in, God wiped out everything. So that was a type of um, regeneration starting again. So I don't want to get too deep into that, but I pray that that, that helps to clarify. So to answer the question, um, uh, technically it is considered a second death because what happens is they're already dead in Christ. Um, because they do not have a relationship with Christ. But when they die, they leave from this earth, they lose the body, what is a part of this uh, natural world. And their soul just, uh, um, their soul lives um, in eternity in um, uh, on the lake of fire. That's where it ultimately ends up. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was basically, you know. Saying, got you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. You're okay, welcome. the next gate is, oh, we got to hurry. The narrow gate. Amen. The narrow gate. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Will somebody read that? Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Does someone have that? I have it. Okay. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to light. And there are few who find it. Okay. So this narrow gate, when we were talking about natural gates last week, we talked about the gate of the Campbell, how narrow it is. But this narrow gate that he's talking about now is uh, when he's talking about the broad gate and the narrow gate, 
Jesus is talking about a choice. He's saying the way to eternal life is not easily passed through. Okay. Now imagine sometimes when, um, it, 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 before I go there, think about this. You have to focus and look carefully for a narrow gate. If you're not careful, you'll pass it by. So think about when you're going, uh, say you're out in the country, you're in the suburbs and you're looking for a street and it's a real narrow street that doesn't have a name on it or, or is not clearly identified. Even with your GPS is telling you to turn, but you don't see where to turn, okay? So you have to focus and really look for that street to make sure you don't miss it. And Jesus is saying narrow, it's harder to pass, okay? It's saying that the eternal life is not easily passed through. Why? Because everyone does not want to believe that Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And everybody does not want to believe he is the son of God. They also don't want to believe that he is God that came in the flesh. Uh-oh. So think about that narrow way. How many people, I won't say how many, but think about the number of people who don't want to believe that. So your choices, and, and he's saying this is a this is a narrow, but narrow gate. And you've got to focus and you got to look carefully because if you're not careful, you'll bypass it, listening to the voices of other people who are trying to tell you that yes, Jesus came, but he was just a prophet. Jesus was just a man, but he was not Emmanuel, God with us. Oh. So this is a narrow gate. And, and, and so it's a narrow, uh, are y'all getting it? It's narrow. And you, you got to possess what you have found in the narrow gate because people will try to convince you that Jesus is not the way the truth and the life. Again, as Evangelist Hartley was saying, they're trying to tell you it's other ways to get there. No. The gift of God, what did I say? The wages of sin is death. It is the gift of God. And what is the gift? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. That's a narrow gate. That's what they're talking about, okay? Believers, apostle hit on this, uh, Dr. Cheney. I was just gonna say that one thing that I just thought about um, with that scripture and what you're talking about is that narrow does not denote like selectivity in terms of like you can and can't come in like a special club as opposed to, um, it still means accessible. It's just the way in which we have to, we, it's just the way in which we access it. It doesn't mean that there are, um, that it's like um, clicky. You know what I mean? A lot of times I think when we think about in the world, when we think about narrow or limited access and things like that, we can um, count folks out, not for the sake of righteousness or, you know, the way in which they believe, but for different reasons, silly reasons. But I think that um, it's important to note that narrow doesn't mean inaccessible. Um, and that I think is, is really important. Correct. It does not mean inaccessible. It just means it's not easy to find. But when you find it, uh, you will be able to go through it. Wow. Believers are gates. We hinted at that last week. Apostle talked about it on Sunday. All right. Remember that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17, it talks about us being the temple of the Holy Spirit. And remember last week, we talked about temples having entryways. So just think about it. We are a temple. And since you and I are temple, then we have entrances that come into us. Things come into us through our eyes, through our ears, through our nose, through our mouth, through our touch, 
even where we walk. It's an entryway into what our bodies, which are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So as a temple, we have gateways that we are responsible for guarding. Psalms 24, seven, I believe said is uh, begins at verse seven says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. We are a gate. And when we look up, we lift up what our heads to the Lord from whence cometh our help. Okay. And we let the King of glory, what come in. And so now we let the King of glory come in. And since the King of glory came in and he's in us, when we begin to praise and worship him, we tell the gates, Hey, open up, let's worship and let the King of glory come in. Let him refresh us. Let Holy Spirit baptize us again. Let God come in and do a work in us. In Proverbs 4, 20 through 27, and I'm going over time. So Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 27. Gives us instructions on guarding our temple. Understand this, people of the living God. There is a battling ram. There is a thief. There is an opponent who wants to steal and kill and destroy your temple. It wants to destroy you. And if he can take you out, the seed of righteousness, it can affect your seed down the line. Uh-oh. We are seeds of righteousness. And guess what? Every believer, once you receive Christ, you become a seed of righteousness. You become a tree of righteousness, okay? You are to bring forth, Jesus says, I have chosen you. You didn't choose me. And I chose you what? And ordained you, okay? So that you bring forth fruit, fruit that will last. Well, guess what? If he can kill you, the righteous one, if he can defeat your gate, he can, if he can ruin you, right? What's gonna happen to your fruit? Wow. Matter of fact, if he defeats you, if he ruins you, you listen, you may not, the seed that you're going to produce won't even be seeds of righteousness. Uh-oh. So he wants you to plant and, and, and create seeds of wickedness, okay? <laughs> so look at Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 27. Please do because again, it gives us instructions from our head to our feet. It talks about guarding and protecting because these are gateways. These are entrances into our temple and we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, reconciling men back to God. But if my temple is messed up, I'm gonna be in trouble. So that's all I have to say. Prophet can, Natalie, can you, you want to that, say something before I turn it over to Apostle? That verse again, Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27. Apostle, I turn it over to you. I know it was a lot that I gave you guys, but we got a whole year to talk about possessing the gates, but I hope that you have gotten enough out of last week and this week to understand the significance of gates and understanding even how you are a gate and why the challenge is so great against you and that there's something punishing against you so that, mm, so that you will fail, so that you will fall, so that you will faint, so that you will give up because you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Apostle, I turn it over to you. Amen. Praise God. Can we give God a hand praise for the class tonight and for Dr. McCray? Um, great, great lesson. Um, great, great lesson. And um, really understanding um, the time component because there's really so much in, in this. 
And when the spirit of the Lord begin to unfold, um, it is going to take a uh, time to really um, dive into it because of the significance of it and uh, what God's called us to do as the body of Christ. And uh, I was thinking as um, Dr. McCray, she mentioned about the gate and uh, she was talking about righteousness and um, just remembering that, <clears throat> um, you know, there that that gate actually um, signifies a standard. And uh, when when Elder Cheney was saying that it's not a, this is not um, the, the kind of gate or situation where this is a clique or this is a cult or this is some uh, um, group and everybody else is excluded. It's not that kind of situation. The Bible says it's free will. He said, it's, you know, Jesus said, it's, it's not his will that any should perish. And it is open to everybody. Um, but the fact that it is accessible and open to everybody does not negate that righteousness is a standard. And when uh, Prophet Kern talked about, about the gate being narrow, that narrow also denotes righteousness is a measurement. That's why it's narrow, because there's a measurement. And I think on uh, last week, um, um, uh, Mother Hartley mentioned about the eye of the needle, and Jesus uses that um, that that um, analogy, that that uh, typology, or that that illustration, because he was um, highlighting how this is a narrow way. Um, that it is not loose, it's not anything goes. And we know that the thief, the enemy, wants to try to dilute or blur the lines um, to try to dismiss a standard. Um, but even in, in the earth, the body of Christ, because as prophet said, we've gone through Jesus Christ, the gate, the door of righteousness, we become standard bearers in the earth. The body of Christ becomes the plumb line in the earth that everything that God measures everything up because we are in him and he is in us and God measures everything by that plumb line. And so, uh, you know, so it takes faith to stay, stay steady as a plumb line and not conform to this world. It takes faith and it takes courage and it takes boldness. Hallelujah. Um, but as uh, um, Prophet said, that it is that Jesus is more than able, God is more than able to defend and to guard and to protect the gates. Glory to God. So great class tonight. So much um, we we'll are talking about. And I, I want to also mention again um, to, to um, please avail yourself to the lessons um, to go back over. Um, I really believe the things that the Lord said, not that nothing God says um, isn't critical, um, but I do believe um, like never before this year, um, we really do need to press into and lean into um, the word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord for what God wants to do because it is a narrow time. And there, uh, glory to God. So thank you to everybody that joined the call. Um, thank you to our guest that was on, uh, Brother Colin. Amen. And uh, thank you to uh, uh, so our sister Belinda. Amen. Praise God. Uh, to everybody that was on the call. Thank you to everybody that participated tonight. Um, as we get ready to take our leave, I want to just decree that the blessing and the favor of the Lord be upon you. Uh, that the Lord God bless you as he has promised you. And that God uh, would he, he, uh, empower you um, as a gate um, and as you, he's given you authority that nothing of your hand will fail, nothing in your life will fail, but that you would be uh, who everything that God called you to be, that you would possess everything that God has given you for this year. So love you all with our life. Have an amazing rest of the night. And um, the Lord will and the Lord say the same. We will gather again for um, 6 a.m. prayer. Have a great night, everybody. All right. I got a question. Hey, um, can I, I want to be able to uh, join another Bible study. Oh, you are most welcome to come on. We we are on every Tuesday um, on this this format on Zoom. Uh, we're on this platform every Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. And so you are most welcome to join. All right. Thank you.
you're quite welcome. Right, Thank I'll you for joining tonight. All right.